Finney, who all wish to ask further supplementaries on that subject. Uh, the next item of business is a statement by Fergus Ewing on the publication of Scotland Forestry Strategy 2019 to 2029. And the Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement. I would encourage members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak buttons as soon as possible. And I call on the Cabinet Secretary, Fergus Ewing. Uh, Presiding Officer, as Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy, I have a clear ambition for forestry. I want Scotland to have more trees and woodlands. The passage of the Forestry and Land Management Scotland Act with new powers and the full devolution of forestry will help us to achieve that. To fulfil one of the key statutory requirements of that Act, I am pleased today to publish Scotland's Forestry Strategy 2019 to 2029. This strategy signals the start of a new era for forestry in Scotland. We build on the success of over 100 years of effective stewardship and growth in forestry and woodlands. The UK Forestry Act 1919 laid the foundations for the thriving Scottish forest and woodland sector that we enjoy today. Forests and woodland now cover nearly 19% of our land and we plant more trees in Scotland than anywhere else in the UK. But we want to do more and Scotland's forestry strategy now sets out our vision for the future. By 2070, Scotland will have more forests and woodlands sustainably managed and better integrated with other land uses. These will provide a more resilient, adaptable resource with greater natural capital value that supports a strong economy, a thriving environment and healthy and flourishing communities. We have developed this strategy in close consultation with others. This included a reference group comprising representatives from forestry, land use, environment, and community sectors. It included a 10 week long online consultation on a draft strategy, which elicited over 400 responses. And finally, a program of meetings across Scotland involving over 250 people from over 120 different organizations. I would like to thank everyone who gave their time, expertise, and views and knowledge to this process. I, I hope it can be seen uh, how those involved have helped to influence the content of Scotland's forestry strategy and that will now help us to deliver its objectives. At the risk of stating the obvious, presiding officer, growing trees is a long-term business. We aim to deliver our 50-year vision through a 10-year framework and this seeks to do three key things. First, to increase the contribution of forests and woodlands to Scotland's sustainable and inclusive economic growth. Second, to improve the resilience of Scotland's forests and woodlands and increase their contribution to a healthy and high quality environment. And third, to increase the use of Scotland's forest and woodland resources to enable more people to improve their health, well-being and life chances. To achieve these objectives, we have identified six priority areas for action, which provide government and all its agencies a route map for identifying and resourcing activity. To deliver this vision will require sectors, businesses, communities, and professionals to continue to work together. So I can also announce today that we will establish a national group to advise on implementation. Our two new forestry agencies, Scottish Forestry and Forestry and Land Scotland, will also be focused on implementing the strategy. We will also develop a process for monitoring and reporting on progress. This process will chart actions taken and their impact as well as measure success. Progress and success will of course require funding. This government remains absolutely committed to providing support for tree planting and woodland maintenance and creation. But we have had no such clarity from the UK government on future funding streams. We know that contracts entered into by the end of 2020 will be honored. And so we're encouraging everyone planning to plant trees to apply for and agree grants now. Uh, but beyond that, we need the UK government to share our commitment for forestry and agree in principle to provide the Scottish government with the funds it needs. I hope this parliament will support our efforts to achieve this. Forestry is undoubtedly a hugely productive land use. It contributes 1,000 million pounds of gross value added to the economy. It provides 
a home to 172 protected species. It removes 12 million tons of CO2 a year from the atmosphere. It supports 25,000 jobs approximately and enriches the lives of the millions of Scots and visitors who live, work and play in Scotland's woods and forests. But let me be clear, future development must work in harmony with other land uses. One of the key points raised in consultation was the need to ensure that success in forestry does not come at a cost to other land uses. We have therefore ensured that the core principle of integrated land management as specified in the land use strategy is embedded throughout to ensure that forestry, farming, tourism, conservation, community and recreational interests work together to help to get the best from our land. That requires appropriate leadership from government. In my time thus far as Cabinet Secretary, I have taken decisive action to reinvigorate this vital sector, which is now seeking a period of great investment and optimism. Planting rates are on the upturn. We had the best year in decades for productive planting last year, whilst also supporting the delivery of over 3,000 hectares of new native woodland, meeting a key biodiversity commitment. I'm committed to meeting our targets for new woodland creation and to, ensure, to ensuring that we continue to manage our 1.4 million hectares of existing forests sustainably. This critical renewable resource needs to be managed to sustain and increase the substantial environmental, social and economic benefits it already provides, as well as to address some of the problems that may have been caused by poor planting in previous generations. In summary, resigning officer, there is great dynamism in forestry in Scotland at the moment. And if Scotland's forestry strategy is to succeed, planting trees and maintaining and investing in woodlands and forests must become a shared national endeavour. I look forward to continuing to work collaboratively across all sectors to realise our vision and achieve our ambitions and to involving this parliament. The Act requires government to report back to Parliament on progress made with implementing the national strategy. I look forward to doing so and reporting on how Scotland's forests and woodlands are increasing their contribution to the success of our country and its people. Thank you very much, Cameron Secretary. We'll turn now to questions, beginning with Donald Cameron. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I begin by thanking the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement? And can I also refer to my register of interests with regards to forestry? The Scottish Conservatives welcome the publication of the government's new strategy. We broadly support its principles, its ambitions, and its focus on a sustainable forestry sector. We welcome its long-term approach, and given the average lifetime of a commercial woodland is 30 to 40 years, it is surely right to set a 50-year timescale. We recognise the importance of the industry and note that in 2017, Scotland accounted for over three quarters of all tree planting in the UK. In relation to his comments on UK government funding, I note the government's, UK government's commitment to protect the entire envelope of Pillar 1 and Pillar 2 funding until 2022 and suggests that he has the clarity he claims he lacks. But in any event, given forestry is now fully devolved and that the Forestry Commission is wholly funded and the Forest Enterprise Scotland is partially funded, by the Scottish Government, his own portfolio budget is plainly important. Could I ask two questions? Firstly, given the Government's failure to meet planting targets in the past, such as in 2017, when Scotland failed to meet its 10,000 hectare a year target, is he confident that he can deliver 15,000 hectares per year from 2024-25? And secondly, as a result of the tension which increasingly exists between agriculture and forestry, is he confident that with these increased targets, expansion of the forestry sector can occur without detriment to the livestock farming sector in particular? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, first of all, I, I welcome the support from Mr Cameron and his party to the broad thrust of the strategy. That is welcome because I hope that we can proceed on a cross-party consensual basis. Um, with regard to the point he makes about funding, he says that the UK government have guaranteed the envelope of Pillar 1 and Pillar 2 funding to 2022. With due respect, presiding officer, that is not the factual situation. The factual situation is that the assurances provided by the UK, the UK Treasury, 
uh, in respect of Pillar 2 funding for forestry uh, applies to contracts entered into by 220. It does not extend to 2022. Indeed, that was the very request that I made when I met Mr. Gove uh, the, uh, at the beginning of January uh, and pointed this out, uh, arguing that uh, this is impairing investment at the moment. And I may say, presiding officer, that my interpretation is, I understand it, shared by Confor, who wrote to Mr. Gove, and I'm happy to uh, share the correspondence that I've seen there and end. And I do hope that because Mr. Cameron thinks that funding is guaranteed to 222, once he finds out that that's not the case, that he will support my efforts to make sure that that, in fact, is made the case without further delay, because this is impairing investment right now, uh, and I think that could easily be dispelled. Um, secondly, we spent about £40 million of grants from the Scottish Government, and I think around about half of that comes from Europe. So if Brexit takes place, then plainly that European proportion of the funding will need to be replaced. On our ambition, yes, I'm working hard to achieve our targets this year. He's right to say we fell short last year, uh, and that's not good enough. And that's why I'm determined that we do better, and determined that we, uh, with the various steps of action we're taking, which I don't have time to enumerate now, but which I think have been welcomed by the sector, we will do so uh, next year. Uh, and I've made that very clear to my colleagues, uh, Joe O'Hara and Simon Hodgson, the new chief executive of uh, uh, FLS. Um, and lastly, he asks about the, uh, the, the interrelationship between um, farming and forestry. I think he's got a point here. This is a concern to some farmers. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Others take a different view. Others, others have perhaps participated in agroforestry schemes, as in fact more are doing. I'm pleased to assure Mr. Cameron that these matters are dealt with in the strategy, I believe inter alia, at pages 23 and 41, and the emphasis on integrated land use, the right place, tree in the right place at the right time. It's not appropriate that trees should be planted, for example, on prime arable land, by and large, and therefore uh, I, I'm sure that, that that is something that would be recognized by all. So uh, this is an important matter, and I'm pleased that Mr. Cameron has raised it, and I'm happy to give him the assurances that he has sought in that regard. Rhoda Grant, to be followed by John Finney. Can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for the advance site of his statement? Um, there is nothing to disagree with in it, but there is very little detail on how it will be Im implemented. It, it's an overview rather than a strategy. It's a strategy on how to form a strategy. The Scottish Government have missed targets on planting and on biodiversity, but the strategy shows little leadership as to how we meet targets in the future. The only thing that's new is the national group set up on the implementation of the strategy. So, therefore, could I ask for some more detail on that? What is its remit? Who will sit on it? Will it be permanent or transitional? And how will it react with for Scottish forestry and forestry and land Scotland? And, more importantly, who will turn this overview into a strategy that will make a lasting difference to forestry in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, I, I, I was heartened, I think, by the, the first sentence that uh, Rhoda Grant uh, uttered, so let's, let's uh, focus on the positive. Um, I think what I would say, in all seriousness, is this is a strategy document. It's not an action plan. It's not a framework for action. The, the inner leaf of the forestry strategy sets out three objectives, which I read out today, but also six priorities for action. And plainly, I've agreed that we will report to Parliament, as we are obliged to do under the Act of Parliament, as to progress we make. As to the group, that the, uh, the formation of which I announced today, obviously, uh, we will look to uh, make an announcement uh, in due course, uh, uh, and that group will include all relevant uh, key uh, voices in the forestry world and the purpose will be to help inform, shape, and benefit the action uh, plan. I'm delighted, uh, Presiding Officer, that we have made substantial progress over uh, recent times in forestry. Last year saw the largest plantings uh, 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 for some considerable time, decades, I believe. I expect that we will surpass that next year, uh, and I'm confident that provided we can get a fair and reasonable settlement with the UK government on funding, and that the this doubt is dispelled about funding beyond 220 as quickly as possible, 
and we remove that question mark overhanging the industry as they themselves have argued. Provided we can do that, I would be confident that we would expect to meet our targets in future years. John Finney to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you, Mr. President, Officer. <clears throat> and can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance copy of, of his uh, statement and welcome this, this positive document, particularly we get as far as page two and the, the increased native woodland covers mentioned. That's very positive. Cabinet Secretary, I'd like to ask you about reinvesting money from the disposal of public forests back into the forest sector. There's several mentions of the contribution to sustainable economic growth. Um, um, that, that isn't specifically covered. There's an oblique reference in page 40 which talks about any funds received that as a result of disposing of land will be solely used for the purpose of carrying out the Scottish Minister's function. Can you give some indication what that money would be used for, please? Cabinet Secretary. Well, um, I, I, again, I'm grateful for the uh, broad welcome of the strategy document from the Green Party. Uh, and uh, I, I was pleased that the strategy specifically it does contain the uh, targets that he, to which he alluded. Um, the a strategy sets out a number of, uh, of objectives and a number of priorities, and these encapsulate a whole range of activities. I mean, obviously, planting, planting trees and restocking is perhaps the principal objective. But alongside that, we have activity in recreation, in tourism, in renewables, in health and well-being, in mental health work. Um, so I think it's reasonable to assume that the funding which is available to uh, Forest and Land, Land Scotland and uh, Forestry Scotland can be used for all of these purposes, not only for the repurchase of land, but you know, for mental health programs to build on the good work there, to expand the renewable potential of our estate. So I think Obviously, funding must be used for the purposes of the body as set out in statute and in this strategy. Um, but I can certainly give a commitment that it would not be siphoned off uh, you know, elsewhere and used for, for other purposes. Uh, and uh, we very much uh, welcome the fact that, um, that we are able to focus on these other areas as well as the core objective of forestry. Mike Rumbles, before by Stuart Stevenson. The Liberal Democrats support the Scottish Government's forestry strategy. It's the right way forward, and we wish him well in implementing it. On the wider issue of future financial support, will the Cabinet Secretary ensure that a forestry organisation is asked to take part in the new group? I know he's being set up to advise him on the long-term future of financial support for our wider rural economy post-Brexit, because this is an important sector. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I will. Thank you. Stuart Stevenson, followed by Edward Mountain. Uh, the strategy sets out a very welcome vision for 50 years and high-level objectives for the next 10. Clearly, there's a lot of work to be done, uh, particularly between now and 2070, when I will be 124 years old. How uh, will the Cabinet uh, Secretary uh, de monitor delivery of the plan and monitor achievement of its objectives, and perhaps in particular, uh, to looking to the 2030 to 50 shortfall in soft food that is referred to in page 20. Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, I doubt uh, I'll be around to listen to the excellent speeches that Mr. Stevenson will make in his 123rd year. That will be my loss, presiding officer. It's <laughs> apparent, it must be apparent to everybody. But uh, well, seriously, the, the, how, how will progress be monitored? Well, it will be monitored in numerous ways, uh, I will receive and I do receive reports regularly from uh, the uh, senior management of Forest Enterprise and Forestry Commission. Uh, that will continue to be the case. Secondly, there are statutory duties incumbent upon the government as set out in the Act where we must report back to Parliament. So there will be continued democratic scrutiny. But he also raises the problem of the, the dip in the total output expected in the 30, 2030s. Um, I mean, that, that is something that has happened because of insufficient planting in the past. Um, the best way to rectify that now is to meet the targets, to improve our planting rates, to meet our uh, targets for planting, to meet our environmental targets. And that is precisely what we are setting out to do. Edward Mountain to be followed by Gail Ross. 
Thank you for signing off, sir. And I'd like to declare an interest in a farming partnership which has an element of timber on the land. I didn't think I'd be standing up to ask the same question as John Finney, but I'm delighted to do so. Cabinet Secretary, I'd like to push you on acquisitions and disposals on page 40 of the document. At the moment, currently, we are disposing more land than we are acquiring, and the money is going into daily running costs. Can you confirm to me when we get to a level, a percentage, when you will stop the sale of lands, i.e. when we only own 60% of what we have today, uh, whether you'll stop the sales, because the rest of the strategy I broadly welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Cameron Secretary. Um, well, I hear what Mr. Mountain says, and, and uh, I would be very interested to receive from him, preferably in writing, uh, an analysis of the facts which lead him to reach the conclusions which he has voiced, because they're they're, they're not uh, as I would expect them to be, and I'd be very interested to see his analysis. I mean, what I can say is that we must allow the uh, statutory bodies uh, freedom to act in order to go about their business, both of disposals and purchases. Uh, the forest estate comprises broadly 650,000 hectares. Of that, around 450,000 is made up of woodland. So not all the land that is owned in the forest estate is actually in cover by trees at the moment. Um, moreover, that land is used for various purposes. It's used for recreation, there are community sales, so some of the sales will be accounted for, I think, by over 40 community sales. We would not expect to get that land back. The whole point is it's sold for the benefit of communities. So land is made available for renewables, for communities, for recreation, for many purposes. Uh, and indeed, the strategy uh, uh, recognizes that it is correct that we do so. But, you know, I'm very happy to come back to this issue, as I expect we will. And if Mr. Mountain would care to go to the trouble of putting something in writing to me, setting out the facts which base his conclusions, I'll certainly look at it carefully. And I will reply to him at that, that point. Gail Ross to be followed by Claudia Bumish. Officer, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his statement and I also welcome the publication of the strategy. Can he tell me what consideration has been given to the report by Comfor, which recommends funding a study to assess the benefits of a strategic approach to significant new and continued investment in infrastructure and targeted funding for restocking and new planting in the north of Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, I, I welcome the suggestion from Con for, and I welcome it in particular because I think that it's right that there should be a particular focus on the northmost part of the mainland of Scotland, uh, Gail Ross's constituency. Uh, and that is because there, are, there is existing forestry there, but some of it is entrapped uh, because of timber transport issues. I'm very pleased that we have provided very substantial support to address some of the uh, pressures on timber transport, uh, and this is appreciated by the sector and it's allowing access to mature forests which otherwise would become windblown and in some cases potentially val valueless. But the study will also recognize the potential for future planting and restocking in the north of Scotland uh, and uh, what would be required in order to do that. So I very much look forward to working with Confor and Gail Ross who has championed this issue for her constituents uh, over the coming weeks and months. Claudia Beamish to be followed by John Mason. Thank you, Presiding Officer. During the progress of the Forestry and Land Management Scotland Act, there was constructive engagement with unions from these benches about the complexities of the bill. Union engagement, however, does not feature in the statement or the strategy. How, how has the Cabinet Secretary engaged with the unions on the National Reference Group, and how does he intend to involve unions in the National Group to advise on the implementation of both the strategy and the further development of the land use strategy, which underpins the way forward. Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, Claudia Beamish is correct that you know, I, I made a point of engaging uh, a, a, with the workforce representative, representatives, the FCTU and the variety of unions uh, that that is, uh, comprised, comprises. Um, in fact, the member will be pleased to hear that I had a lengthy meeting with the trades union representative just last week, uh, where we had a very useful discussion indeed. Uh, and uh, I look forward to continuing, uh, and I undertook to look forward, I undertook to continue with that engagement. And my 
approach, as the Minister has always been, to have regular, uh, sufficiently regular engagement with the trade unions to make sure that their concerns are properly heard in the Scottish Government. That's exactly what I shall continue to do, and we shall give careful thought about, uh, about what, what role, what additional role they may be able to play. And generally speaking, uh, my approach to this is that uh, their participation is not a liability, but an advantage. Now we have five more questioners and only three, two and a half minutes. So succinct questions and answers, please. John Mason to be followed by Peter Chapman. Thank you uh, very much. Um, at the REC committee, we've had some evidence that there, there was traditionally quite a solid line between farming on the one hand and forestry on the other. Does he think going forward that maybe it, the two can be more combined? Because I think sometimes hill sheep farmers would benefit from having some trees in their land. Cabinet Secretary. Um, yes, I, I do. I mean, I think there's a substantial role for, for agroforestry. Um, and I, although not a farmer, uh, I understand that this, for example, includes the creation of shelter belts which can protect against, in cold weather, the risk of hypothermia for livestock, which is a very serious problem on some exposed land. It can also provide for flood, uh, uh, flood management options. Uh, and it can also provide on an economic level a form of diversification for farms. So I think there is a, a lot of scope for, for more being able to be done um, in terms of agri-forestry. Uh, and I'm determined to see what opportunities there are to, to make this as swift, as smooth uh, uh, as it possibly can be. Peter Chapman to be followed by Maureen <coughs> Ward. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome this statement and its commitment to planting more trees and to improving the sustainability of forestry in Scotland. As the Forestry and Land Management Bill went through the committee, I pushed for an amendment placing a duty on ministers to make arrangements for research in relation to tree health and promotion of sustainable forest management cross-border. Despite this amendment passing, there is no reference in this strategy to what research will be carried out to ensure our trees remain healthy, particularly cross-border. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell us what arrangements have been made in relation to tree health research? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, we, we have, as we undertook in the um, course of the uh, debates in the forestry legislation um, uh, uh, dealt with uh, and are on course to fulfilling our obligations in respect of cooperating with other parts of the UK and their governments in relation to forestry and tackling disease. I draw attention to Mr Chapman of um, page 33 of the strategy which deals with the, our, the importance of tackling all of these matters he is absolutely right to, uh, to allude to the importance of these because there are very many serious diseases which can have a very significant impact on forestry uh, and have done in the past. Uh, and that's why it's, it's important that we, uh, we have a, a clear strategic overview about how we do that and, and, and indeed we have precisely that. Maureen Wood. Um, the excellent support that FCS staff have given as a partner in the delivery of branching out courses in Forestry Commission Woods, for example, at the Tyre Bagger near Aberdeen, has highlighted the benefits of woodland spaces to people's mental health. How, Cabinet Secretary, have you ensured that the voice, views and experience of people working in forestry and woodlands, as well as the general public who benefit from access to it, have influenced the development of this strategy? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, we have sought to listen to these voices, and Maureen Watts is quite correct to point to them, and I think it's covered at pages 26 and 35 of the strategy, and I agree that the mental health programme branching out has been a successful and a popular one, and um, a, he, she refers to a particular um, course of branching out uh, near Aberdeen. Um, so this is something that we have included in the strategy uh, as an element of the work which is relatively new uh, for the Forestry Commission. I've spoken to some of the staff, I believe, in their Perth office who've been rolling out this. They were really enthused about how uh, recreation in the forest has been able to provide improvement and sense of well-being for those suffering, suffering from mental health 
issues. Uh, I think this is really a, an example of, uh, of new ways in which we can use our forest estate to good effect, and I would like to work with others to see what more we can do to build on this successful programme. Thank you, Ian. My apologies to Colin Smith and to Richard Lyle, who have waited patiently throughout to ask their questions, but I'm afraid we have run out of time. We've gone uh, more than two minutes over. Point of order, Edward Mountain. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary said that he was not clear that his recollection was that the Forestry Commission had sold more land than it had purchased. From the Forestry Commission's own figures that were published earlier, the, since 1999, the purchases were 79 million. The disposals were 147 million. That is clear that there was a position, and I wouldn't want the Cabinet Secretary to be in a position to have misled the Parliament. Thank you, Mr Mountain. I think that's a point of political debate, and the point has been noted. However, they can exchange information.